don't sound good. Good morning and happy Easter. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to Covenant's virtual worship on this Easter Sunday. I want to thank you for joining us remotely for worship as all the in-person meetings continue to be canceled here at the United Church Center because of the need for social distancing. Please go to the website, our Covenant website, which the new website will be up on tomorrow. There's still no different way of having to join it. Just go to it, but you'll see a new website beginning tomorrow. Or our Facebook page to find all the information on the Zoom, how to Zoom in on the virtual events that will be going on this week. And they will include uh, on Wednesday night, I will win, I'll return to our Wednesday night life lessons at 7 p.m. And uh, then that's called connecting with, reconnecting with God. And also next Sunday morning, our Lighthouse Adult Class at 10.30. And of course, next Sunday's uh, worship at 11.30. It's always best to try to log in about 10 minutes beforehand, uh, just in case it takes longer to connect. Uh, we will be having uh, virtual communion today. And so if you would like to participate in communion, uh, please take this time to go get something to serve as the bread. It can be a cookie, cracker. It really doesn't matter, as long as it's important to you. Or, and some liquid to represent the elements uh, for communion. And we will be having communion today. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank two very special people. One is Dodd Waters for all his technological efforts that enables us to continue to have worship uh, in this format. He spends a lot of hours behind the scene here at the United Church Center to make all of this happen every week, and we owe him a deep a debt of gratitude, and so thank you, Don. I also want to thank our gifted musician, Phil, uh, for his dedication and his gifted service to Covenant, especially during this time of challenge. We tried doing the music doing uh, through Zoom. It doesn't work uh, with our format, and so he comes in each week to play, and I want to thank you, Phil. The peace of the Lord be with you. And as always, while social distancing, let's not socially disconnect. Greet one another in peace this week by reaching out to your loved ones, your friends, and relatives by social media, and lift their spirits by checking in on them. And now, here's Phil with Christ the Lord is risen today. today for the celebration of the resurrection comes from Acts 10, 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak to them, 
I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did in both Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify, testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The gospel reading for our celebration of the resurrection comes from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the word of the Lord.
Today, Easter, the most sacred day in the Christian faith. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This year, we celebrate Jesus' resurrection like no Easter before. These are tough times. The people in our community, our city, and all around the world. And because of it, many have lost hope. Many find themselves at the breaking point in the face of COVID-19. Children are out of school. Too many adults are out of work. Folks are having to stay at home except for essential errands. Our economy, economy is at a standstill. Our frontline heroes are fighting an unseen enemy that has invaded the bodies of our loved ones and our friends and our neighbors and killing them by the thousands. So many are experiencing a loss of hope. And yet today is a day we remember the resurrection. In our Christian tradition, we should all should be celebrating the resurrection every day. But on this Easter Sunday, when so many have lost hope, I want to talk to you for just a few moments from the topic, celebrating the resurrection of hope. Let us pray. God of the resurrection, we thank you. We thank you that you have not left us or abandoned us. And that means that there's always hope for us. And so in these few moments, God, speak through me that I might bring a word of encouragement, a word of hope into the lives of those who may be at the breaking point. This morning, God, I ask you on this day of the resurrection to allow them to reach beyond the break and hold on. Holy Spirit, help me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight on this day, Lord. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let me just say before I get into the sermon that at the end of the sermon, I'm going to ask you to sing along with me a very familiar hymn. Now, please do not unmute your mic because it interferes with the music that's being played that we want everybody to hear and experience. So just keep your mic muted and sing along that way. Celebrating the resurrection of hope. You know, there's only so many ways you can tell the story of Jesus' resurrection. It hadn't changed in the last 2,000 years. Deacon Jamie eloquently read it, the story in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, and the details were rather complete. And so on this resurrection morning, while we are celebrating Jesus' resurrection, and that's the theme of Easter, it's the theme of our worship, I want to concentrate for just a few moments on helping us to recognize Easter as the celebration of the resurrection of hope. As I said earlier, Easter this year is like no other. On this most holy day in our faith tradition, this pandemic has us socially distancing, adhering to shelter-in-place orders and curfews and stay-at-home orders. And so for us at Covenant this year, there was no sunrise service. There was no Easter breakfast, and believe me, I miss it. There was no gathering of in-person celebrating of the resurrection where I would say, Christ is risen, and the congregation would respond, Christ is risen is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Today there are only four people here at the United Church Center. Phil, our gifted musician. Deacon Heath Bowles this year, who will lead us in communion. Dodd running the technology. And me. 
And yes, we are practicing social distancing here as well. Again, it is a very different Easter than any we've ever experienced. But at the beginning of the passage that Stephanie read so eloquently, there are some words that I believe that God is still speaking. On this Easter Sunday, 2020, in this era of a pandemic commonly known as the coronavirus, it's a word from God to help us in celebrating this Easter as a resurrection of hope. Let me just say, a virus does not know if you're old or young. A virus does not know if you're rich or poor. A virus does not know if you're a legal citizen or undocumented resident. A virus does not know if you're a good person or a bad person. A virus doesn't know if you live in a mansion or if you're homeless. A virus doesn't know if you're the parent or child. Therefore, a virus shows no partiality in whom it will attack. But thank God, God doesn't show partiality either, but in a totally different and opposite way. God shows no partiality in that God offers God's love, God's forgiveness, God's mercy, God's grace, God's help, and most importantly today, God's hope to everyone who is willing to receive it. The passage that Stephanie read was from Acts. It was written by Luke, the same person who wrote the Gospel of Luke. And in it, he has Peter making that point very clear this morning in Acts chapter 10. In verse 34, he writes, Then Peter began to speak to them, I truly understand that God shows no partiality. Verse 35 says, But in every nation, anyone who fears, and the word fears right there means anyone who reverences God, but in every nation, anyone who reverences God, and does what is right is acceptable to God. Now I want to caution you. Do not be fooled by those who use this, this phrase, does what is right, to try and manipulate and control you with human-made doctrines, rules, and regulations, and legalism. Jesus himself, before he was crucified, settled that issue. He told us what is right in God's sight when he identified the two greatest commandments and saying in the first that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and might. In other words, you love God with everything within you. And the second, he says, is like unto the first, that you love your neighbor as yourself. And to make sure you got the connection between this is what doing what's right mean in God's sight. He says all the laws of all the prophets hang and hinge on these two. And so Peter warned us. He wants us to know that Jesus did not show partiality also when he walked among us. In verse 38 we read, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all. Not some, but all who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And the 39th verse says, we are witnesses to all that he did. I have no doubt this morning that a great many of those who were oppressed of the devil were simply experiencing a loss of hope. Just as many of us today, in the effects of this pandemic, are facing the loss of hope. At Covenant, we don't call it a funeral. We call it a celebration of life. It's a way of noting that a person who has died impacted the lives of those left behind in meaningful ways, making that an occasion of their death to a reason to celebrate one's life. Now, while we hope to see them in eternal life, 
they're gone forever from our earthly lives. And right now, in this era of COVID-19, we're even limited in how we celebrate the life of someone who is dear to us to have died. I attended two funerals this past week of folks that I was close to that has died, but it was virtual, one by live stream and the other one by Zoom. But this is Easter. And on this day of the resurrection, we're not holding a celebration of life service for Jesus. We worship in a service called a celebration of the resurrection because though Jesus died on Good Friday, he rose on today, Easter Sunday morning. The grave couldn't keep his body down. He's alive. And God is still speaking to us in 2020. And God is telling us that Jesus' resurrection tells us that there is hope beyond death. Jesus' resurrection tells us he lives that we might live also. Jesus' resurrection tells us this Easter, we don't have to gather in person to remember, to remember who he was because we know who he is. Jesus' resurrection tells us that his divine presence is always with us because he was, he is, and he always will be a very present help in the time of trouble. Jesus' resurrection in the face of COVID-19 tells us to hold on because though weeping may endure for the night, joy and hope is coming in the morning. This is Easter. Jesus' resurrection is meant for, to be for every one of us a time of celebrating a resurrection of hope. I don't know what you're facing this morning. I know that many of our folks are facing financial difficulties. Many of us are facing health challenges. Many are facing disconnect with their families. But God knows and because he lives, you and I can face tomorrow. Because he lived, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. This is Easter. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so today we are celebrating the resurrection of hope. And with your mics muted, why don't you sing along with me this great hymn. God sent his son. They call him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my Life is worth 
Let us pray. God of resurrection, on this Easter Sunday, we thank you for the resurrection of Jesus. We thank you that you are a God who brings a resurrection of hope. Therefore, we trust and believe that you will bring resurrection into our lives and into our community and into our world beyond this pandemic. But loving God, in the meantime, we need to feel and we need to know the resurrected presence of Jesus the Christ in our lives to sustain us and to encourage us while we're going through these challenging and difficult times. God of hope, we remember every prayer request that is known and unknown. And we lift our eyes to you, the place from where all our help comes. And we ask, to be, ask that you will be with all those that are troubled in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for hope. We pray for help to those who are overcome with financial difficulties, health challenges, whatever the difficulty is because of this pandemic. We pray for our leaders, God, to have wisdom and to serve with hearts of compassion and with pure motives. We pray, God, that you will strengthen our heroes, those who are putting themselves on the front line, putting their, healthy, their health on, out there in danger as they risk exposure by serving others. God of Easter, we pray for your church. We pray for people of faith everywhere. Encourage us to trust in your care and your grace that we might live as Easter people in these Good Friday times. God of resurrection and hope, your word instructs us to come boldly before the throne of grace so that we may find mercy and help in our time of need. And so that's what we're doing. And that's why we praise and we pray at this time. Keep us safe this week after Easter as we worship and celebrate a risen Savior who's in the world today. In Christ's name, amen. Every time that we receive the sacraments from this table, we call communion. We are celebrating a risen Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. But we're also celebrating the hope that comes with Easter. But before we come to the table of blessing and hope, it is right for us to pause for just a moment to confess those things that leave us feeling separated from God, from others and the best in ourselves. Would you join with me now in a time of personal confession? Amen. Scripture tells us that if we confess our sins to God, he is faithful and just to forgive us of those sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, know today that God has heard each of your confessions and you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Alleluia and amen. On the night that Jesus was to be betrayed by the kiss of a friend, he called his disciples to the upper room to share a meal with him, just like we're sharing a meal here with one another today, even though it may be virtually. And he took bread or crackers or whatever you've got. He lifted it toward heaven. He gave thanks and he blessed it. He passed it to them and he said, take and eat, for this is my body, which is given for you. And then at the end of the meal, he took the cup he lifted it toward heaven, he gave thanks, and he blessed it. He told him to take and drink, for this is my blood of the new and the everlasting covenant, 
poured out for the forgiveness of the sins of the one and the sins of the many. And as often as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you do these things to recall me into your memory until I come again. If you feel so comfortable where you're sitting, we're going to collectively ask for consecration of these elements, ones that you've got before you. Loving God, we know that you are not confounded by time or space or even in one place, that you can send your Holy Spirit down on these simple elements of the seed of the field and the fruit of the vine that we all have before us so that they can become for us today the body and blood of Jesus Christ and the hope that Easter brings. If all these things be in the holy name we pray. Amen. Now I'm going to give you just a moment to take your bread. And we're going to consume together. Much like in our old church, this is the way we used to do it. With this bread, it represents the body of Jesus Christ. Let it be for us the bread of heaven, and let us eat. Now we take your liquid. For this is the blood of Jesus Christ, poured out for each one of us so that we may have salvation. Take and drink. Would you go with me in prayer? Almighty God, we thank you. We thank you for this table of blessing and hope. And we thank you for feeding us on this day as we celebrate the resurrection of hope. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. As it has begun to pour outside, I pray that the Holy Spirit will rain down on you wherever you are on this Easter Sunday. Sunday. I want to thank you for zooming in for worship today. I want to leave you with these words from an unknown author that was shared with me yesterday by Chris Lindley, a member of Covenant. He had received it from a friend. And they say this, when this is over, may we never again take for granted a handshake of a friend, pool shelves at the store, Conversations with neighbors, a crowded theater. Friday night out, the taste of communion. A routine checkup, the school rush each morning. Coffee with a friend, the stadium roaring. Each deep breath, a boring Tuesday, and life itself. When this ends, May we find that we be, have become more like the people we want to be. We are called to be. And may we stay that way, better to and for each other, because of the worst we've been through. And so, as we end this service, we end as we traditionally do. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from the other. Amen.